appreciate it. I didn't get mad about it. I had a black woman and a white woman stand next to each other. And they told me, it ain't us that's racist. It's y'all. Y'all believe the narrative that you speak. We all grew up together. We have no problem with each other. It is you who believes this thing that you believe. And I was like, well, you know, I don't, you know, okay. I ain't say, you know, there's no argument to be had really. But I was, I was thrown aback. I was surprised, but I was also thrilled, right? Because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my fear of the hills and the mountains and all of that is uh, ill-conceived. I, I, I've been shocked every time, and, and we, I've had multiple discussions with multiple people about. Look, I admit, I'm you know, I had I, I had my you know I had my hand balled up, and just in case I had my shoulder turned and. Just in case I gotta throw a bolo because I didn't know what I was gonna experience here. And it's been completely the opposite of, and I'm gonna say it bluntly, Metro Detroit is the most racist place I've ever lived in my life. Brother Steve, okay. I've lived, I've lived in Minnesota, Hawaii, Indianapolis, Kentucky. You know, I've been a lot of places, brother, at least especially recently, and I have never experienced, and I've had white people tell me the same thing about Detroit. And uh, Detroit. Okay, on that point, you are continually shredding at this critical race theory. It's fantastic because hopefully people will chime in with their diversity of insight. And, and, and honestly, listening to you, you know what it, it, it's, it's a validation you must hear all sides of a story point number four the importance of experienced knowledge CRT scholars explain that experiences storytelling biographies parables narratives family histories the list goes on of people of color are crucial to the understanding of racism and changing the American society for the better. Now, with your actual personal, researched, and educational feelings of racism as a whole, how does that apply to you? Can you reformulate the question? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I follow. I don't, I don't follow. All right. Experience knowledge, right? Yeah. So under your experience, what you believe of American society and racism within that American society, your experience through your storytelling, your biography, your parables, your narratives, your family history, of people of color those things are crucial to understanding racism so as to change american society for the better what's the question how or okay the question would be well i guess that's another lens so through the stories told and the parables, et cetera. That's how they grasp or continue to curve, make that round curve of understanding racism. Let's see what number five says. It content, CRT contends that there is no one answer or one path to freedom. Key word, I guess, to freedom. Instead, CRT says that we all ought to use all the tools we have to educate individuals and fight for liberation. In fact, that same group of scholars in 93 explained that CRT is an interdisciplinary and eclectic meaning it borrows from a number of traditions. One example is feminism. So um, those five tenets are the 
filter by which racism is assessed and analyzed in American society from its primary institutions. And the filter has the lens of American slavery. Is that fair to say, Brother Steve? I will say okay. that um, much of what you said is certainly true. Um, uh, and there has to be something said for it. Um, and my example is, um, let's say something like colorism. Um, we didn't make this up. Our culture didn't make this up. Our ancestors didn't make colorism up. Even all the conquered world, as far as uh, African diaspora and uh, native no, uh, almost um, genocide, and as far as it goes to South America and, yeah. and Americas in general, um, we all have colorism. Whether it's Dominican, whether it is um, uh, Colombian, whether it's Puerto Rican, whether it's Mexican, I'm gonna get killed by all these people by saying this. Um, but uh, there, <laughs> there is a level of color colorism. For example, when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> I was always told I was cute to be so black, meaning so dark skinned. Um, and I was much darker because I was outside all the time. I think that's a remnant of uh, diaspora, to be honest. Um, when I tell white colleagues or friends that they're just in shock, like, what? Like, you, you, you know? And I've had situations where I've had light skinned cats come up to me and Oh no, we didn't like each other back in the day. What are you talking about? Like I, this is nothing that that I, you know, I perpetuate. But it is what it is. You know, I mean, I can't get away from it. But here's to say, I mean, that for any white person that's saying, you know, you know, just get over it or blah blah. blah this this is ingrained. You know, you if you say I was baking a cake and I put eggs in it, and you went and you know dug through the cake and you said I don't see no eggs. It's baked in the cake. So I have to say, there's something to say for. Uh, a level of um, nativism, um, a level of um, uh, tribalism that is um, not born of of, of uh, our our ancestors. I have to say that. I have to admit to that. To the extent it impedes our progress, I have to admit that it doesn't seem to be stopping us much in the, in the BUS. Um, but I will say um, that that's what you'd expect from an ape half a chromosome away from a chimpanzee. Uh, that last part was kind of deep. So um, <laughs> here, yeah, yeah. Here, here is a point and then I'll ask the question. Um, if we remove the athletic sphere out of it, you know, the brothers that play uh, or perform on a physical level, and we just use the quote unquote black intellect, right? Does, okay, the, the millionaires, billionaires crowd you were speaking of, the ambitious brothers and sisters, the up and comings, does, and I'm not even talking about critical race theory as it's being argued in these town halls being used in uh k through 12 right what we discussed today these definitions and critical race theory for those brothers and sisters of success is it even an application that's question one right second part based on how you know our relation formulated in college you know under our uh institution and understanding how a program was instituted for us to successfully test through so we could become worthy, right? You know what I mean? Would you say that, quote unquote, racism, that system of segregation, these other so-called impediments our people experience, 
would you liken that to that same program we went through to be tested to actually see if we worthy now in america is america but in america we represent excellence on the globe so for them brothers and sisters who got through those cracks reached those high levels of business and academia and intellectualism can we say they overcame and are the example of we have overcome the crt apply tell me what overcame means and tell me what the goal is of overcoming like so what would you say is acceptance of overcoming like when, when if there's an overcome and then there's a criteria for it what's the criteria and what's the goal for that like so how many people need to overcome before we've overcome fair enough so in and in, in, in listing some in that those tenets we heard freedom for freedom or to get freedom and liberation and i guess overcoming as best i can say to what you just asked me is are we at the space the place the time where we are operating in that society on equal unhindered ground it's just let the best man win is that where we are as we speak overcame we've overcome everything that has prevented us from being at this starting line with nigerian you know the olympic lanes are we as african american or the black united stations did we overcome the history of America to get to this point of competition with those other immigrants who don't share that history? I think that's a hard one. Um, there may be many reasons why we haven't done it, and it may not be because of slavery and discrimination and all that kind of stuff. Maybe our choices. Throw that um, here. Now, the choices you got to understand we were making under our being conditioned for an extended period of time so is it you when we had a previous episode that referred to us as black white people we black but we think white based on our conditioning I don't know thing, but... okay so are we operating in an african reality with a european mind frame I think we're Americans, man. We're in the West, um, and we we all grew up in the West. It's a different mentality. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I've had many conversations where, when nobody else is around, different kinds of Africans have called us white or said that to me that we're white or whatever. What they really mean is, um, you know, American, Westernized. Well, we're, we're fine, but you know, no no Ethiopian thinks like a Nigerian. No Nigerian thinks like a Zulu, and no Zulu thinks like a, a Congolese. Uh, this idea that they are all the same is a lack of understanding that you have no idea what the rest of the world is like. The rest of the world is more about uh, 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 culture. So when they call us that, they mean culturally you're a way. Culturally you're a certain way. You're not like us, and that's true. When okay. that, that that was an interesting point where you said about the uh, Ethiopian in Nigeria because it's another channel I follow called The Renaissance. And it's an African brother. And he also lends to our history and how we came over here from Western Africa. And in his show- This is we, you ain't never came over from Western Africa. Okay. I don't know this we shit all the time. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, when you know, I say- I'm gonna start being insulted, man. I'm like, I've never been- No, 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 no. Okay. When I say we, it's under the platform of revelation. I know what you, I know what you mean. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm giving you a tough time. The Hebrew mind of the we, because everybody don't ascribe. I'm giving you a I time. haven't found out that history yet. But in his presentation, the Ethiopian uh, all these people were brown, right? Uh, Sierra Leonean, a Ghanaian, a Nigerian, and an Ethiopian. All four of them brown people from their countries didn't like each other. And it was the cultural and religious distinctions. The Nigerians who are Islamic in Nigeria are, are Islamic.
revelations.unveil.detroit.